Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Monday. It is December the 18th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and just a couple things before we get started on the lesson. Uh, this is probably going to do it for me this week. This, uh, you know, this is kind of what starts to happen into the holiday. Uh, doesn't mean that we won't get a day that it goes all the way up, straight up, just like this, or maybe even straight down. But this is rather typical. And for me, it's just not worth sitting around here. I'd rather take the time off and be taking care of some other things and spending time with my family and so forth. So this is probably going to do it for me. Um, no more chart lessons for the year. Uh, won't be doing any uh, mid-morning chart. If I happen to come in, I may put up a mid-morning chart, but no chart lessons. Unless I just get extremely bored before the first of the year. Um, just looking at the calendar. Um I'll be back in the office Monday, uh, January 1st. So uh, that's the plan at this point. Actually, I take that back because that's New Year's Day. Um, I won't be back until probably the 2nd. So uh, it'll be Tuesday, January the 2nd, I'll be back in the office. So i uh, glad I noticed that, but I wasn't thinking about the New Year's Day being on the 1st. There won't be any trading that day anyway. So. Uh, I haven't looked at the trading calendar to see exactly what's going on because I'm not planning on trading anyway. But uh, today will be it for me. Um, if you would, just hold any questions on, um, you know, trades and things like that until I get back uh, because I, I, I'm not going to try to answer. The only thing I'll answer on email, I'll check my email at least once a day and try to answer anything critical that needs answering. But uh, as far as trade questions and setups and things like that if you would please just hold those until I get back uh, just so I'm not swamped and overloaded it's not so hard to catch up when I get back uh, uh, if y'all could go a, you know a week and a half or so here without um, any questions that would be helpful for me uh, again if you got an emergency don't hesitate to send me an email I'll get to it as quick as I can like I said I'll usually check the mail my, my email at least once a day um, I'll probably be slower getting to it than normal, but uh, I'll check it at least once a day and kick, just to make sure there's no uh, emergencies or critical issues or anything like that. So, but I uh, hope everybody has a great holiday. Um, uh, take some time off, get away from it a little bit. Um, if you need the screen time, uh, you can always still trade if the market's open. Sometimes it, it it's a good chance there may not be much going on, but it doesn't mean that it won't be. I mean, this market has been on a tear. Um, we actually, we just went through the 2600 and here we are now. We're knocking on the door 2700. So I don't know, you know, where this thing is headed, but with the tax, uh, you know, with the tax cuts probably coming and the tax, uh, getting some tax breaks and things, I could see this market maybe going higher. I don't think we're done yet. So um who knows but um it's been uphill i mean this that was the quickest i've probably seen it go from one century mark to the next in a long time and uh, usually you know when you push through a century type area which are your hundreds your 2500 2600 2700 usually prices will test both sides of that for a few days at a minimum before it starts to either back up or move forward again it seems like we went right through 2600 and never even really came back and tested just kept going and never looked back so uh, we may do that at 2700 who knows but uh, uh, anybody that tries to short this market uh, longer term i mean we're we're day traders so it doesn't matter we can buy and sell every day but long term i, I would not be betting against this market that's all i can say so uh, but anyway enough of that uh again I'll be gone until January 2nd, so um, uh, hold your emails if you would, please, and uh, unless you've got an emergency. And otherwise, I will see everybody on January 2nd, but let's move on. Not going to be much to talk about today. There's a few nice trades here. Uh, this is a range day. On days like this, unless you get like a failed break low or something, I, you know, once you start going sideways like this, uh, I wouldn't even try to, I usually don't even try to keep a runner. Um, you know, I just scalp out and I'm done with it because you just don't really have room for a runner. Um, I mean, if you look here, 93 to 97, you basically got a four point range there. And, you know, by the time you enter your trade and scalp out, there's not much room left. So, um, now when you get a, 
trend like this that's heading up, this is when you want to catch your runners. And if you'd caught this one, you'd had a nice runner. Um, but yeah, when we came in, it was really strong up. It was all uphill. Uh, you had to kind of sit here. It was really slow uh, from about seven o'clock on at seven o'clock hours right in right in here somewhere in one of these little bars. It didn't look like much was going to happen, but notice this little double bottom here. So that is like a new low. You kind of double bottom like a new low. So you get a first entry short, second entry short. So that's a failed second entry short. You pretty much worked your way sideways back to the EMA. Uh, this has been a very strong trend really since late Friday uh, afternoon. It's been straight up. And so we're probably going to make a new high here. And uh, so when it broke higher here, it, it's right into the highs of the day. But when you get a strong trend, a lot of times, you know, especially with a trap, you just, you, you know, you just about have to take it or you're not going to get a trade. And so, um, you know, that's the only thing I would say that might, if you talk to yourself out of this because of the resistance, don't beat yourself up because that's probably not a bad move. Um, you can see if you tried to do it anywhere up here, you would have got burned. Um, but this was a strong trend still. That's the first break of the trend line. Uh, you got a nice clear channel right there. That's an easy to find channel really. Uh, most of your price action was already there by the time you got in. And it fits on both sides real neatly. And you can see it kind of fading off here. So it gives you an idea we're probably going to get a break. And really what normally will happen on a strong trend day like this is you'll just get a flatter trend didn't happen today but that's what happens a lot of times and uh, so generally if you get a trap like this you probably want to take it and and this is like your early you know your regular session opening trap that they usually they you know they made it look like it was going lower and they trap a few people and then it takes off to the upside that's standard they do that pretty much every morning there's some kind of little fake out at the open and uh, but Notice if you'd stayed with the trend, you're good to go here. So uh, generally the trend is going to play out and went over. Uh, there's another double bottom here basically. So there's another failed second entry short. And there's only three bars there. Uh, you've already got your break and two legs up to a new high. So I'm not crazy about that one. But it, it really is the exact same trade as this almost, except you even have a little more room there than you probably do with this one. And it's only three ticks there, but you're way away from the EMA, the whole nine yards. I probably wouldn't take that trade. I'll mark it green anyway, uh, but I wouldn't take that trade. And then look what happens. You push on up, pull back first entry, pull back second entry. It fails. You're still a little ways away from the EMA. You've already had your break, two legs up. I like going short right there. Uh, if anything, just you might would have wanted to draw that right there. And just to ride it back to that trend line, it ends up coming back and going through it. So it didn't really come into play. It, I think it does fit there. And so if you saw that, you can see it does kind of fit. You get an overshoot there, so that would lead you to believe it's going to go even further than that trend line, even if you played that. I'll leave it on there. I didn't end up, uh, you don't really need it, but if you saw that, I mean, that's what you're looking for in case it bounces here and takes off again, but it just kind of keeps going sideways. And then notice what happens. You get two legs up, and that's generally the center of a pattern for a larger move. So I would measure that leg and I'd look for a measured move, but I'd also measure the whole thing in case it went a little further and that would be your next target. And you see, we came really close to that. And so that would have been my target moving down there. So notice that little two legged. So that's a new high first entry, pull back second entry. It's a failed second entry long. And it's really a fairly small bearish bar. It didn't quite close on its low, but there's a little bit of support right here. So I was a little hesitant, even though there's a trap there. So I made that one green, but it's right there on the borderline of being green and red. And you would have looked for that measured move down. And I would have also measured the upper side of the channel and look for a measured move there. And, and you can see we got that to the tick and then it bounced. So you're coming down. Uh, there's a double top 
and so you can count that as a new high first entry second entry so there's a second entry long right there that fails but there's basically a double bottom there um, again you could probably argue for that one to be green and of course it it went down and it, then you get your clothes outside and you get two legs down to a new low and it reverses this one normally if you were a long way away from the ema i'd say you might try to ride that one back but it's right into the ema so wait on a higher low which comes right here and that's right back into what now is the midline so i'm not crazy about that so wait on the true reversal and then we push through the ema pull back make a second entry short that fails and turns and goes back up i like going long right there and you're just looking for it to ride back to the upper side and that's exactly where it goes it actually goes a little higher i mean you would have scalped out of that one easily and then again you wait on the lower high uh, but you don't have a break of this one yet this is your first break uh, but you do get a lower high here and a big bearish bar notice how many times once twice three four five times we tried to go through and then you get that big bearish bar i just i'd take that lower high and just go short looking for it to come back down to this side um, and then of course you get your failed second entry long actually it doesn't come till right here failed second entry long there and you did push through the ema a little bit i mean through the midline and pull back so i really like that one and you're just looking for it to come to the other side um, on this one since it did it didn't break lower on the first bar i would probably let that break lower and use a limit order and try to get a little better entry uh, just in case it didn't make it down there and of course it didn't make it down there but you still would have got out of that trade uh, you would have just barely got out of that one uh, then it bounces you actually had a close a close outside already so um that was another reason i mean this one really almost want to make that one anytime you try to enter around the mid middle of this thing it can get a little bit more risky so really that one should be green um i liked that trade at the time so i went ahead and marked it red but it really should have been green um, because you're going sh short right into that midline and you just never know uh your your best trades are off the lows and off the highs and generally waiting on uh, uh, a higher low off the low or a lower high off the top and if it's you know if you've tested it multiple times you might and you get a really strong signal bar you might even take the first reversal off of it um, but with all that right there i don't really see a good signal bar regardless so you really had to wait on the lower high here and then that failed second entry long and it did push through that's why i still kind of like that one um but I definitely, with, with this bar not closing on its low and, and closing back above that midline, I'd let it break lower there, and I would at least get a tick or so in there just to get a little extra room before getting to that low in case it ticks one tick lower and bounces or makes a little double bottom and bounces or whatever. But the fact that it pushed through that midline gives me a little more um, incentive to want to gamble a little bit on that one so it really should be green though so and and if you're smart you'll probably just skip it all together and then that got you of course you don't quite get back down here to the lows so you don't want to be going long right back into that midline even though that would have worked right there it's too risky and he, here's your nice short right here um if you were you know if it wasn't after two o'clock but notice how it pushes up and then it comes back and makes that little trap and then turns down um, and you really make a lower high here and there's your resistance really just kind of moved down at that point and if you move your line down you can see that and so i would have that wouldn't have been a bad trade maybe right there if it wasn't after two o'clock but that's what i saw today nothing really great to write home about but there's a few trades there you chance to make some money um, again just remember on range days you're better off to buy the lows and sell the highs and be really careful across the middles and uh, that's it for today that's going to be it for the year next time i talk to y'all it'll probably be uh 2018 so i hope everybody has a great um 
Christmas holiday period and a happy new year. And uh, if you trade, good trades to you. And if you take off, enjoy the time away. That's the, one of the beauties and benefits of this job is that we aren't tied down to having to come in here every day and work. And, you know, if we want to take off, we can. And I, I like to take this time of year off. So uh, it's been a long, uh, you know, it's been a long, quick year, I would call it, because I can't believe it's already the end of the year. It seems like we just started this year. Uh, but it, it went by really quick, it feels like to me. So. Uh, the years just keep flying by. Seems like I've only been uh, doing the videos for a couple of years, but uh, I think I've been doing these videos for six, seven, eight years. I can't remember how long now. So, um, but it doesn't seem that long. Uh, it's one of the joys of doing what I do. I, I love what I do. So, um, I'll retire one of these days, but I still got a ways to go. A couple more years to go. So. Um, but anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, it's been a fun year. It's been a good year. And, uh, you know, it was slow at times, but it's still been a good year. Um, hopefully in 2018. Um, generally, right after the first year, you get a lot of really big movement, and it's usually all positive. So uh, as, as positive this market has been, if we could get a, a, a you know, start the 2018th on a, another tear, we might run another 100 points or so in the first month or a few weeks or month the way this thing's going. So just be prepared. I'll see you on January 2nd. Um, but I'm done for now. I'm done for this year. I uh, hope everybody has a great holiday, and we'll see you next year. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com.